Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Frank Family's uh, Pino and Paella Virtual Tasting. My name is Liam Garrity, and I'm the Director of Hospitality here at Frank Family Vineyards, and we're coming to you live from our historic stone building, my personal favorite place uh, uh, to host and to share our wines on the property. I love being in this building because it has such incredible history and such an incredible feel. I hope you can see it at home. Uh, I'm joined today by a wonderful chef that we here at Frank Family Vineyards have had the opportunity to work with on a number of occasions. His name is Gerard Nabeski, and Gerard is the paella king uh, here in Napa Valley. Today, we're, he's going to be sharing his tricks, his tips in making the perfect paella dish in your own home, and he's going to be sharing a couple of nice, fun appetizers that you can share with your guests um, while that paella is slow cooking. Uh, Gerard, uh, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks. It's good to be in the Stone Building. We've done a lot of paellas here, and uh, we've always had a great time. Uh, we've got all kinds of great stuff for you guys today, and this gives us a nice opportunity to share our cooking experiences that we've had here in the Stone Building with you at home to, to make your paella live with us. So I think it's going to be a really good time. I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you, my man. Thank yeah. you for being here. I'd love to be yeah. here. Now, as we talk about the food today, we're also, of course, going to be sharing some fabulous Frank Family wines that we've chosen to pair perfectly with the dishes that Gerard's going to be making. And today, we have a really special wine to share. It's the premiere of our latest vintage of the Lewis Vineyard Pinot Noir. This is the 2018, and I hope you have it at home, and I hope you're going to be sharing it with us today. Uh, we'll be pairing this with our paella dish. We'll also be pairing our sparkling Blanc de Blanc wine with... Uh, a uh, little bit of cheese and quince paste, yep. a, a fun little appetizer pairing. And with Gerard's shrimp skewers, we're going to be pairing our Lewis Vineyard Chardonnay. As we talk and taste and talk about pairings, uh, I'll share a little bit of insight into the wines from the program today. Gerard will share some of his cooking techniques, and we hope that you enjoy it uh, at home along with us. Now, as with all of our virtual tastings, uh, we encourage our audience at home to ask questions. You'll notice in the chat section of this Zoom tasting, uh, you have an opportunity to write something in, and we would love to share uh, 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 with you and, and answer your questions live during the broadcast. And as always, we'll be asking a couple of tougher trivia questions today, uh, so make sure that you're paying attention at home uh, and listening uh, uh, along with us. Uh, with that in mind, I'd like to introduce uh, Frank Family's Marketing Director, uh, Marissa McCann, who's joining us live today and who will be monitoring the chat section and answering some of those questions and uh, uh, asking those trivia questions as well. Okay, so Gerard, tell yes. me a little bit about your history. Uh, you are a chef working out of Santa Rosa. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, friends, before we dive into uh, Gerard's demonstration, I, uh, and I just want to take a minute. Um, as many of you watching at home know, uh, the Napa and Sonoma regions are our home. Uh, uh, we're inundated right now with fires. But I want to take a moment to clarify. While there are some fires here in Napa Valley, the majority of these fires are situated high up in the hills of the mountains that create the valley. And our staff and our guests are safe here right now. We're monitoring the situ situation every day, making sure that our team is safe. The majority of these fires are situated high up in the hills, away from where the wineries and where the towns of Napa Valley are. So I'm happy to say that our team is safe, our guests are safe here. Um, if you have any questions about what's going on in Napa right now, uh, feel free to ask us in the chat section. And I wanna take a special minute to thank all of the first responders here in Napa and in Sonoma and throughout the greater Bay Area, the firefighters who are working so hard every day and the police officers who are keeping our people safe. Uh, I wanna say thank you to all of you for the work that you do and Frank family appreciates it. And we send our love and our support to all those who are impacted by these fires. Okay, so Gerard, tell me about you. Tell me about your work and, and, and what you do here in uh, uh, wine country. 
Okay. And we, the dishes uh, that we're going to be tasting today. Yeah. So we, uh, we're known for paella, of course. But uh, um, it's pretty much started way back when. Uh, Frank family was actually on a ski trip in, in Utah. And I got a call to do Terry Atch's birthday party here. And I was missing some key ski equipment. And so I had to fly back anyway. So I thought it was a good excuse to come back, pick up some stuff. And then we did a paella party uh, over in the other building for Terry Hatcher. And from there, the paella for us really, uh, it really took off. It just went to the stratosphere. And we've done music festivals across the country. We've cooked paella all over the place. And it's been a great ride ever since. And we've done many, many paellas in this building right here and had some great wines and some great paellas. We have. We've, we've done an almost annual affair, what we call the Pinot and Paella, which is what we're trying to share with you today, the wonder of our Pinot Noir and how it pairs well with, with Gerard's Paella dish. Um, Gerard, tell us a little bit about Paella. Okay. Uh, it's history, where it comes from. Uh, uh, the, the components used, and, and, and you're going to be preparing one live for us today. Okay. I can't tell you all the history because that's one of our trivia questions, so I'll try and navigate around that. But uh, paella is a dish. Uh, paella itself, the, the name of the pan is the paella. It's also a very shallow, flat dish because you want the all the liquid and everything to cook off of the pan. Yeah. You don't want it to be a gloppy mess or anything, so you want a, a flat, shallow pan with all your miscellaneous ingredients, um, but your staples are always going to be rice and saffron. And then whatever else you want to put it, whether it's rabbit, chorizo, chicken, fish, seafood, anything you want. It's so you can well. have a lot of fun with paella. As a lot a, of fun. As an it's great. Chef. It's really, really great. Yeah. Rice and saffron. Saffron is a Spanish spice, yeah? Yeah, well, it's grown all over the world now, but it's, uh, it's, the Spaniards definitely made it very popular, but it's, uh, it's in the Middle East, it's in Mexico, it's all over the place. We actually grow it at the coast ourselves right now at home. I've got my own little saffron field going right now. Get out of here. Yeah, and it's really good, too. My daughter doesn't, doesn't like picking it, so <laughs> that's all right. How did this become your specialty? Uh, I used to, like I said, I used to do a lot of ski trips, and I liked doing one-pan meals. So it was really easy to, to go in the backcountry and go skiing and camp out and just have one pan to bring in and cook and clean. So the pie was born for me. That, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, well, how do we get started? Let's dive so in So let's go over the ingredients real quick. I've got some mise en place set up over here. Uh, we're going to roast off some uh, bell peppers. We also have diced tomatoes. We have uh, wild gulf shrimp, squid, boneless skinless chicken thighs, some aged Spanish chorizo, garlic, parsley, and lemon for the finishers. Uh, we've got manchego cheese with quince. We're going to make a quick little appetizer to try with the nice. white wine. Um, we also have over here uh, Nora chili, which is a chili from Spain. It's one of the first things we want to put in the dish. Saffron, smoked paprika, and salt. And all these ingredients are going to go in and make this beautiful paella, and we're going to get cooking, and it's going to take about 30 minutes. Start us off. Let's, Let's see how, we, uh, how so, we dive in on this. Okay, so I'll start both pans, and then we'll start the shrimp in one, and we're going to start the paella in the other one. Now, Chef, you say paella is a dish named after its pan. What's so special about this pan other than the fact that it's wider? Well, it's... Uh, they, or, come, they or, come in various sizes, that's for sure. I mean, we've, we've got pans up to 10 feet. We've got giant pans. Uh, and, and can our audience at home make a dish like paella without needing a special pan? Absolutely. As long as it's a flat pan. You don't want to use a wok. You want everything to steam away as, it, as you're cooking. So we're going to first start off roasting some of our peppers. We're going to add a little bit of salt to it. And we're also going to add a little bit of garlic. We're now, chef, yeah. I've, I've been told before that garlic can sometimes overcook and burn. It's okay to put it in this early? It can, and it gets bitter. So we're just going to cook it until it sautés a little bit, and then we're going to add in our chicken, and we'll add in our tomatoes, and we should be, we're going to dodge all those disasters in the kitchen by, by monitoring the whole time. I don't mind. Nobody likes burnt garlic or burnt rice. So we have a couple questions over here. Okay, fabulous. Um, for so us. Nancy Williams is joining us today from Charlotte. Ilana Bouvet is uh, joining us, and she says, our favorite Fink family, paella and um, Pinot perfection. Nelson Tucker says, made the paella uh, earlier today with this recipe, absolutely delicious. Jillian is joining us as well and says, longtime listener, first time caller. I've heard real paella does not have seafood. Is that true? That's a great question for our chef. What do you think about that, Gerard? Does real paella not have seafood? Uh, no, it's, uh, uh, it can be, it can be the rabbit pie, as I mentioned before, or chicken pie, but no, pie is, pie is, uh, can be an interpretation in many ways. Um, I think the most popular pie is actually a seafood pie, so. I, I want to say who's, who's to decide what real pie <laughs> is. 
I think if you, uh, if you love to make it, it should be a dish that you can make however you want. <laughs> they would like to argue it in Spain, though. They don't mind. Um, today, when we get to the point where Gerard's uh, completed preparing the paella, we're going to be tasting it with our 2018 vintage Lewis Vineyard Pinot Noir. Now, this wine is going to be, I think, a wonderful partner piece to the paella. Uh, if you haven't already at home, go ahead and open this bottle up. Give it a chance to get a little bit of air, get it to uh, uh, ease up and open up a little bit. And I think some of the flavors that we discuss are, are going to come out a little bit more uh, when given the opportunity to breathe. But before we do that, um, because this dish does take a little bit of time to prepare, we want to have a couple of appetizers out and something to share with our guests uh, as, uh, as our dish is cooking and as our guests are waiting for the meal. And so in today's lineup, we're going to be sharing three wines from Frank Family's Lewis Vineyard. Now, Lewis Vineyard is situated in the southernmost region of Napa Valley, the part of Napa Valley referred to as Carneros. That's the neighborhood. Carneros is a cooler region and an ideal region for growing the grapes Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, which are going to be the two grapes that are used in the wines that we're featuring today. Uh, the first wine in our flight is the Blanc de Blanc. Now, this Blanc de Blanc is from 2014. This is our current release of this wine because the sparkling wine genre uh, does require a little bit more time to, 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 to develop. Uh, typically, in sparkling wines at Frank Family Vineyards, we talk about a five-year span from, from crush to uh, release, uh, including a, a, a length of time where the wine is just simply resting and developing, and that component of, of carbonation, which creates that sparkling wine, uh, is having the opportunity to kind of just slowly develop. And I think this Blanc de Blanc is going to be a fabulous wine to taste with the first um, appetizer that we're going to be making today, which is... Um, a, a real simple appetizer. It's going to be a manchego cheese mm -hmm. uh, paired with a little bit of quince paste. And Gerard, you look like you're working hard over here, getting our components together. Tell us about what you're working right now. So we're going to do the, uh, the quince cheese. Quince is like a, uh, it's like an ugly apple. It grows all over the Bay Area, actually, but people don't usually do, not to know what to do with it because you've got to cook it down to make it palatable. But when you put this, uh, when you cook it down and make a paste out of it and put it on manchego cheese, it's one of the best appetizers there is. It really showcases wines, and it's also just so simple. It's called a Romeo and Juliet, so it's meant to be together. And it's just a great, a great appetizer that all of our clients always just love it. It's, they love it for its simplicity and for how, how good it goes with any type of white wine or bubbles. <clears throat> we got that out, and I'll put that on a little plate here. Should I give this to you, Liam, for a taster? Oh, uh, sure. That sounds great. Thanks, Gerard. Yeah, I love a simple appetizer course of a little bit of cheese, a little something creamy, a little something rich, partnered with our Blanc de Blanc sparkling wine. Blanc de Blanc, um, sparkling wine made in the traditional method, also known as method champenoise. That's Frank Family's approach, and that's how we style this. Uh, in the regions of Spain, they make a wine called cava. And cava and champagne have a lot in common in the sense that they're both made in the same method, which in includes that component of bottle fermentation. Bottle fermentation, as opposed to tank fermentation, uh, uh, traps that naturally occurring gas and stores that gas in the bottle, which creates that wonderful effervescence. Um, so I think a, a, a more traditional pairing for, for, for Manchego, which is a cheese from the Spanish region of La Mancha, um, would be a traditional Spanish cava. But I think it works really well with this Blanc de Blanc. Here, I know, my great. friend. Give it a try. The cheese is a little buttery, a little herbal. Um, it's made from uh, sheep's milk as opposed to cow's milk. The region of La Mancha, um, really dry, pretty arid, and grass doesn't grow very easily there, but uh, herbs and uh, brush grow well, which is an easier thing for sheep to graze on. So they... Uh, uh, Sounds like my house. <laughs> they make this cheese out of uh, sheep's milk and it's pasteurized but it has a nice kind of undertone of, of herbal notes to complement that richness and that butteriness and I think that pairs really well with the fresh bright acidity and vibrant energy of this 2014 Blanc de Blanc yeah, it's, it goes very well with the Blanc de Blanc mm. alright we have a couple other questions here Yes, Marissa, thank you. 
Sure. So Some questions from our audience. Chris Burke wants to know if we're going to print these recipes for everyone. So I just want to let everyone know these recipes are on our website. If you go to freefamilyvineyards.com and go to our blog, you can find all the recipes that we're cooking today. Um, and Karen wants to know if we mention the rice and what type you're using, Gerard. Gerard, that's a great question. When you're making the paella, can you use just regular store-bought rice? Is there a special rice that, uh, that's important for this dish? You want to use a uh, medium, medium to short grain rice. Um, in California, we grow some of the best rice in the world, I think. And our, our rice, the grown up in Calusa area, is rivaling Spanish rice. In fact, they call it Calusa rice. We know their rice is bomba rice, and they know our rice is Calusa rice. And um, the, a medium grain rice from California is fantastic, very accessible. And I think that it's, it's just, it's a, it's a great vehicle for the saffron for me. I use it 100% of the time. Occasionally I'll use Bomba just for grins, but I actually prefer our California rice. Just California? California cow rose, medium grain rice. Dynamite. What's, yeah. uh, tell us about where you're at in the paella right now. Uh, so Gerard. we've sauteed down our bell peppers, our garlic. Uh, we put some of the chorizo in there and we've added the saffron threads to it and a little bit of salt. I'm gonna now add a little bit of smoked paprika and then we're going to put in the six ounces of tomatoes. Look at that. Right here are diced tomatoes. Yum. And we're going to cook that down until it gets a little bit syrupy. And this is what we're making our, our little base for the paella. And it's going to be called a, a uh, sofrito. Once the sofrito cooks down, we're going to add in our chicken stock. And then we'll add in the rice and other goodies right on top. So the rice goes in last. Rice goes in almost last. Yes, right, right before the seafood. Fabulous. That looks amazing so far. So far, so I good. I hope that some of our guests at home are making this along with us and are, are, are looking at this the way I'm looking at our, at our, our <laughs> chef's dish right now. This looks really, really incredible. So far, so good. Now I'm just going to plate up the shrimp real quick. So Manchego cheese. A cheese that has a rich, creamy, buttery texture. Uh, wonderful secondary notes or flavors uh, uh, from the herbs that the sheep graze on. Uh, and, and just enough fat to create some balance between the richness and textures of the dish, the cheese in this case, and the uh, freshness and brightness of this Blanc de Blanc. Um, real quick word about Blanc de Blanc. Blanc de Blanc is a French term. It means white of white. The implication there that the grape Chardonnay is the only grape used in the, in the wine. Uh, this is an important note of distinction because in traditional champagne wines, uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay are used uh, together to create a, 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 a classic brute. Um, uh, the fresh, bright acidity and focus of flavor that the Chardonnay brings is balanced by some rounder, floral, and more complex tones of the Pinot Noir grape. When you make a Blanc de Blanc, essentially what you're saying is, we want to focus on that purity of nature of the Chardonnay grape and really capture its essence in the glass. Now, this 2014 that we're featuring right now at Frank Family Vineyards has had an extended time. Um, surlis, and the term surlis means on yeast. It's a French term, and it means resting on yeast. And the longer that a sparkling wine has the opportunity to rest on the yeast, uh, the more time that yeast has to influence the wine's flavor profile and aroma profile. And if you're drinking this at home with me, you'll notice a wonderful play between the crisp, fresh, bright apple and pear notes of the Chardonnay grape and those more toasty, brioche, rich notes that come from that extended time on yeast. I absolutely love where this Blanc de Blanc is right now because it's, it's youthful enough to possess a lot of that bright acidity, but well-rested enough to have that complexity of flavor. And I absolutely love the way it pairs um, with this simple but truly delicious uh, Manchego cheese and quince paste. Gerard, how's it going over there? And I agree with you. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> so now we've got our saffron and garlic shrimp appetizer. Yes. You want to try this next? Dynamite. This Look is at very that. Very good. Uh, uh, Gerard, before we um, before we dive in on this incredible appetizer dish that you've yep. just I can't believe you just made that in the last five minutes. Um, I want <laughs> to check in with our audience at home and make sure that they've been paying attention. Marissa 
Do you have a good trivia question for our viewing audience right now? I do. Okay, let's see who's been paying attention. We're going to switch things up today. I'm actually looking for the fifth correct answer to this question in our chat section. So I'm looking for the correct answer to what region of Spain does manchego cheese come from? Fifth correct answer in our chat section. No. Okay. Close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a winner. Ooh. Rachel McKinney, La Mancha. Congratulations, Rachel. <laughs> Um, the marketing team here at Frank Family will be in touch next week, and you'll receive a $100 gift card to Frank Family Vineyards. Congratulations, Rachel. Great answer. La Mancha. La Mancha is essentially situated in the very center of Spain. Um, it's, of course, famous uh, for uh, the, the fictional character Don Quixote, the man of La Mancha. And the term uh, manchego uh, comes from the name of the region where this cheese comes from. Congratulations, Rachel. La Mancha. Sounds so elegant. <laughs> uh, the next wine we'll be talking about today, friends, is our 2018 vintage Lewis Vineyard Chardonnay. Uh, Gerard, tell us a little yes. bit about the dish that you've made. So this is uh, wild gulf shrimp, and it's very simple again. It's just with a little bit of garlic, uh, a little bit of saffron, uh, roasted peppers, and a little bit of salt and a tiny bit of sriracha to give it a tiny little bit of kick to it, and a little lemon squeeze on top. Again, really simple appetizer. And just amazing flavors, really, really good flavors, good punch, good everything. And again, it goes great with the wine. That looks amazing, Gerard. Oh, uh, thank you so you much. Waiting? I'm going to wait just a minute. Right. Um, Gerard, you prepared that so quickly, I didn't even have a chance to talk to you while it was coming. Because I think shrimp cooks really quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, a little turn and burn. So tell me how you did it. So again, it was just a little heated up with olive oil, put in the, the fresh red bell pepper, garlic, saffron, a little bit of salt. Turn and burn the shrimp around, take it off before it gets too rubbery, and they're done. Good to go. Easy. Nice and, and quick. And you topped it with some of the same components that you're using in your paella. In the paella, yep, the saffron. I guess for your at-home uh, chefs, that makes it a lot easier, right? One less thing to prepare. Exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit about our Lewis Vineyard Chardonnay. Uh, like the Lewis Vineyard Pinot Noir, this is a vineyard de designate, 100% um, of the fruit, uh, for this wine coming from our Carneros Vineyard, Lewis Vineyard. Lewis is named after Rich and Leslie's grandson, uh, Lewis Frank, who I hope is uh, watching this broadcast today. Um, Lewis Vineyard is a perfect property for the style of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir that we want to make here at Frank Family Vineyards. Uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are tricky grapes. They're challenging to grow. They require a certain... Um, climate circumstance to be really successful in, especially when you're going to barrel age them, which is how we do them here. Uh, the Carneros region, close proximity to the San Pablo Bay, which is also the North Bay of San Francisco. And that body of water is able to bring a, a cool breeze, um, fog, uh, moisture, and a bit more cloud coverage to the vineyards that grow at the south end of Napa Valley. Now for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, these are grapes that need slightly cooler environments to build the acidity necessary to support the wine's time in oak. Uh, oak aging is great for wine's complexity. When you take a Chardonnay or a Pinot Noir grape and age that wine in wood, it allows some of those wonderful oak notes like vanilla or cinnamon or, or spice to migrate from the wood barrels into the wine. But in doing so, you're also pulling some of the natural acidity of the wine away. So when oak aging a wine, it's important that the grapes come from a region that's a little cooler, which builds more of that natural acidity in the fruit to support that time in the wood. <coughs> Balance is such an important word when talking about Chardonnay. And I think this Lewis Vineyard Chardonnay really captures that balance. Uh, in this case, the balance is coming from the fresh, bright acidity of the grape and the flavors that come with it, as they're offset by that richness derived from the time in the barrel. And this wine showcases from its aroma a lot of those secondary notes of caramel, butterscotch, cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, uh, but not to the point where it's overwhelming or superseding that crisp, bright, fresh acidity and fruit flavor of the Chardonnay grape. 
Um, when paired with the shrimp skewers, you get a nice balance of that acidity offsetting the natural uh, uh, richness of the shrimp and that olive oil that Gerard used to cook. I second that. I totally agree. I think it's fantastic. Gerard, did you, uh, did you always want to be a chef growing up? I do. used to do a lot of graphic design first. But yes, I've, I've always had a, a, a love for cooking and adventure, and this kind of led me into this path. So it's been great. No complaints at all. Wonderful. Um, I think, Marissa, uh, do you have a question from our audience? We do. Um, so we have a couple more. Um, some comments here. Susan says the shard is really amazing. Um, Lori Michael Edelman is uh, asking where Leslie is. So if they're lucky, Leslie might make a cameo appearance later on. Um, Linda wants to know, can you use brown rice to make paella, Gerard? It's a great question. Can you use brown rice? It's a great question. It's very Sonoma County, West County question where I come from. You absolutely cannot. Brown rice, brown rice, you have to cover the dish, and the rice would get very gloppy. But with paella, you never cover the dish. You want all the liquid to steam away from the pan completely. So brown rice, it takes longer to cook. It, 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 you have to cover brown rice to cook it. Right. Yeah, and you can't do that with this dish. You want all the liquid to steam away. Good to know. Great yeah. question. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, Gerard, tell us where we are in our preparation of the paella. So all the flavors are melding together right now. Our nor chili is doing its job. This is basically like the, the bay leaf of the dish. Uh, chicken is doing great. Everything's looking fantastic in here. It's reducing down slightly. I'm about to add the rice to it. So we're just going to just move everything around a little bit and just check on it. But it's looking very, very good. I did a, I don't know if you see this at home, but I did a quick little burner switch because this burner was not acting very hot. So I did a quick switch to get it going a little bit faster. What temperature uh, do you like it? Or if you were cooking this at home on a burner, medium high, high? Rolling boil, low. yeah, always high. Yeah. Always high. So yep. this is a dish that you cook at a pretty high temperature. Pretty high temperature until you add the rice. And then uh, you'll get it to a boil and then reduce the heat just slightly. Hey, guys. Hey, Leslie, how are you? Leslie, how are you? <laughs> Sorry, Lori and Michael, I had to get some Chardonnay. But I've been watching the show and sitting here and smelling this amazing paella. Um, Gerard, uh, we, we call him the paella king because you are. And Thank you. <laughs> for, those of, for those of you who have not had the good fortune of tasting Gerard's paella, um, at least you have the recipe, which that's pretty amazing because... You know, they, they can try to make it at home, and I'm sure it will be fabulous, especially if you pair it with Frank family wine. But it won't be as fabulous as what we're going to have <laughs> today. So, anyway, um, I just want to, uh, to buy which camera am I looking at? This one here? Okay. I just, uh, to reiterate what Liam was saying off the top about the fires here in Napa Valley, um, we're, we're very fortunate, all of us and all of our family here at Frank Family are, are doing fine. You know, knock on wood, we hope it stays that way. It is very smoky in the valley today, but we are, all the wineries up and down 29 and Silverado, we're, we're all open for business. Um, we hope it stays that way. Only Mother Nature knows for sure. But our hearts go out to our friends in Sonoma and our friends east of us who are dealing with the fires. It's, it's a bad situation, and um, sadly, it's, uh, it's kind of become... Uh, too frequent here in Napa Valley, yeah. and we hope that uh, we hope that, that the firefighters, the first responders, get everything under control. And our heart goes, our hearts go out to them too, because they've been working around the clock since all of this has happened. But we want to say thank you to all of you who have been sending us emails and text messages, checking in. We're doing okay, and we're here today, and we're inside, so we're not breathing in some some bad air. And uh, and and we're drinking wine, and we're about to have some amazing paella. So. Uh, and thank you, Gerard, for being here today, and, and you. Liam, you too, for for conducting this and uh, and walking us through the wines. And cheers He's good. to that. He's good. <laughs> and I know uh, 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 Rich Frank is uh, is standing off uh, in the audience here because he's you know he's waiting for the food. So. <laughs> He heard paella. He's like, where do I go? He's here. Rich has a <laughs> knack for showing up as soon as the food is ready. Exactly. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, cheers, Leslie. Thank you, Leslie Frank, for joining us. Leslie and Rich Frank, always uh, so supportive of what we do here at the winery and so uh, uh, eager to engage um, with our guests and our members. It's such a treat to work for people who care so much about the thing that they make and the people who enjoy it the way that they do. Uh, Gerard, I want to just ask a quick question, and, and, and this is for me, not necessarily for anyone at home. But you are not just the paella king in, here in Napa Valley, but you have the distinction 
of, of, of winning a very, uh, a very special contest. Um, and that was a throwdown. We did. We did a throwdown in a 2006. Th- a throwdown, if you're not familiar, this was something I grew up on as a young chef, a young person working in restaurants. I loved and I, 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 I gobbled up everything I could find on food um, on television. And one of the things that I loved was Bobby Flay as a chef. Um, uh, Bobby Flay really captured a lot of the things that I wanted to cook and that I love to do. And I, living in New York, I love to visit his restaurants um, uh, uh, when I had the chance. Uh, Bobby Flay had a show on the Food Network called Throwdown, where he would challenge masters of a certain style and, uh, and, and, and try to beat them. And I believe something happened between you and Bobby Flay. He did. Can you tell he, us about that? He showed up at a paella class, and um, I had not uh, seen his show, so I had no idea who he was. I thought he was late <laughs> for the class. And he showed up at the class, and uh, once I figured out who he was, uh, it was it was on, and um, it was very intimidating. But uh, once it was done, uh, we we came out the victor, and it was it felt good because he's really a paella. Uh, he really knows the paella. Well, a lot. Spanish food is really one of his uh, areas of expertise. It I is. know in total with his show, sometimes he'll choose a topic like donuts or 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 a, a banh mi or something of that nature. But yeah. his his experience with Spanish cuisine would have made that a very intimidating contest. Yeah, it was. It was very intimidating, but I was glad that we were the victor. And um, I was incredibly intimidated because he rolled out with all kinds of other chefs and, and, and uh, equipment and, and a fan club that was pretty much put in place. <laughs> And so we were, we were really pretty worried. But, they kind uh, of barnstorm you there, don't they? They did. And by the time it was all said and done, I was really happy with how it all turned out. And the judges were, were, were great. Uh, one of the judges was Daniel Oliveira from, from uh, Madrid, I mean, from Barcelona. He, was, uh, he was, really liked our paella, so that made me feel really good. That gave me some credit, finally. I got some real street cred from Barcelona. That's great. Tell me what you're adding now. Now we just added the shrimp and the calamari. We're just putting it right on top. Again, we're not going to stir this dish at all. You're not allowed to stir paella because that's like a jambalaya. You stir jambalaya till the rice splits like a hot dog bun. You never stir this because you want the rice to caramelize on the bottom of the pan. And that's one of the reasons why you're using a medium grain rice. If you use a long grain or a basmati type rice, it'll just burn. But this will caramelize and give a nice sweet crust on the bottom. This is, I think this is so great, Gerard, because it's very easy to read a recipe and it says, add this, add this, add this. But as we can see today, there's an artistry to the way you even choose to add the ingredients in the paella. It can't just be all thrown together at once. It takes, it takes a, a, a tender hand, and it takes a lot, of, a lot of care and attention. Yep, there's timing on all of it. All the more reason to have good wine at your house when you're cooking paella. Very important. <laughs> very, very important. Well, congratulations on your victory in that throwdown. And, and uh, I, know, I certainly know that we at Frank Family have been the beneficiaries of your incredible talent, your incredible skill. Oh, well, I have too, because I've been to drink a lot of Frank Family wine because of that victory. Your first <laughs> event here happened many years ago. And, and, and I, side note, um, I've had the chance to work with Gerard on a number of events here at the winery, both for our club members, but then also smaller private events. And what I've loved about uh, um, uh, Gerard's work is that as we've grown, he's grown in the capacity to, uh, uh, to, to, to share his, his work with us. And we've done events for 15 or 10 people, and I think we've done events for over 100 people. Yeah, it's been a really neat organic growth, because as, as, as my paella business has grown here, uh, uh, the Frank family uh, lineup has grown, and it's amazing, too. And Todd Graff, the winemaker, which I wish he was going to be here today, but he's driving his daughter to school in the East That's Coast. Right. But yeah, Todd sends his regards traveling this weekend. That Otherwise, guy, I assure you he would be here. He would be, and he is an amazing winemaker, amazing guy. Yeah, it's been a good journey. So, Gerard, paella is known as a Spanish dish. Can you tell us a little bit more about its origin, about its history? Isn't that a question? Yes. But, we, but isn't that a question we're supposed to wait for the answer for isn't that a trivia question? Well, <laughs> I can't let, let the cat out of the bag. We can't. We can't. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Um, uh, it's known as a Spanish dish, uh, but it's, 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 its influence or the influence on the Spaniards that created paella um, goes back much, much further. In fact, it was uh, 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 considered to be a Moroccan dish at one point in time. Oh, be careful. Or be the, careful. <laughs> 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 he wants a hundred bucks. I do. I do. <laughs> um, no, it was uh, uh, cultures that had actually traveled to and settled in Spain 
That, and this is going to be a point of contention, I think, to some of our viewers, because, yes, we know paella to be a traditionally Spanish dish, but uh, that Moroccan influence coming into Spain uh, uh, had, I think, some effect on the way they developed this dish. It's um, one of the few things they'll argue about within Spain is your version of paella and soccer scores. Soccer scores. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you travel to Spain a lot? I used to quite a bit. I haven't been there in a few years, but we used to go there every year, and we spend the winters over there in the Pyrenees doing skiing. So skiing in Spain, skiing in... In the Pyrenees, we'd hike in and set up a snow camp and yeah. ski around. Yeah, that was my, my jam for a long time, and it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Really good time. How close do you think we are on this delicious paella? We're close. We're about 10 minutes away. This we looks got, fabulous. Everything's been added now. Now you just have to be patient, drink some good Frank family wine, and relax, and wait for it to finish off. And this would be a wonderful chance, if you're preparing this at home, to bring out those shrimp skewers, to bring out that manchego and quince, and to share with your guests... Um, um, a little, a little appetizer, a little hors d'oeuvre, because a dish like this can't be rushed. It really does need to uh, uh, develop, and all those flavors need the opportunity to. to... Oh, hello, sir. How are you? Oh, excuse me. Another guest appearance. Hi, everybody. Hi, Rich. How are you? Gerard. Um, I'm trying to think back of how many years you've been coming here and cooking. I, I'm going to say it's over 20 at this point. Yeah, it's right around 20. Yeah, for sure. It's. I remember. When Amazing, we, huh? We were this small little winery and. You were cooking on, these pans are really small comparing <laughs> to what, uh, what, what Gerard usually does when we uh, have a lot of people here. So it's phenomenal. I also watched, for those of you who come up when we have it to Bottle Rock, if you want to know the longest line at all the food concessions. But the fastest line. I, okay, I'm, <laughs> nobody will remember that. It's going to be another year. But my point is, Everybody's waiting in line <laughs> to get paella there, you know, and uh, it's become just so popular. It's been been great. And we were glad to start with you early. Yeah, uh, there's been a, a couple of questions. I've been I've been looking at the computer over here. A couple of questions about smoke and is it affecting the grapes and uh, the fires and how is that working? Uh, nothing's been affected yet. We don't we don't know what's going to ultimately happen, but Right now, it is not a problem. It's not an issue. And in fact, Mother Nature, because of the heat we've had early, gave us an early season this year. We actually picked, I think, our first grapes from down in Lewis for the champagne back on August 17th. And um, so a lot of that's been coming off already. Tomorrow, we're going to start harvesting our uh, grapes for the Chardonnay. Uh, so it will roll out. Um, I think this is horrendous what happened, but it will pass. And we got lucky. We, we, we missed a lot of it. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to come by because I'm hanging out to taste some of this in a few minutes. So <laughs> I'll try not to drink too much while I'm waiting. But I'll drink your share. It looks good, really <laughs> good. Anyway, see you guys later. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rich Frank, for joining us. Great to see you, sir. Great to see you, Leslie. Um, uh, our next wine that we'll be talking about will be the Pinot Noir, our 2018 vintage Louis Vineyard Pinot Noir. But before we do, we want to check and make sure that you folks at home have been listening. I think Marissa has a question. Yes, we've been getting um, a lot of comments over here about Dennis, and I wanted to just read, the, read some of the nice comments we've been receiving. So now Nelson Tucker says, Spring Family has always been my favorite winery to visit. My favorite memory is tasting with Dennis before he passed. Your wines are the best. Um, Wendy says, Gerard made paella in the Frank family barrel room for a wedding party on October 23rd, 2004. We love you, Gerard, and we miss you, Dennis. So thank October you October in 2004 mm -hmm. in the barrel room. That's amazing. Ger Gerard, wow. you, have, you have such a great, such a wonderful history with us. I, I, really, I really just treasure the moments that you and I have had to work together and... Uh, Yikes. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And, um, and uh, uh, I know that you and Dennis had a great friendship. And I know that you uh, uh, had a wonderful way of working together. Um, Dennis Oblosky, for those of you at home watching, uh, the tasting room manager uh, here at Frank Family Vineyards for many, many years. And uh, uh, truly a character, truly a person that you could not forget. Um, Someone that we talk about every day, and someone that we think about every day, and someone that we uh, quite honestly miss every day. Um, uh, 
as, as, as woven into the fabric of who we are uh, as anything. Marissa, yes. I think we're ready for another trivia question, Wonderful. Liam. All right, let's see who is paying attention. We want to know, on what day did we start harvesting our Lewis Vineyard Chardonnay for the 2020 Blanc de Blanc? And we're checking our chat section right now. All right, we have Stephanie Bro Brodish, August 17th. August 17th, great answer, Stephanie. Frank Family's marketing team will be reaching out to you shortly. Uh, uh, to give you your $100 gift certificate for Frank Family. Yeah, sparkling wines are made in a process that uh, involves two fermentations, primary and secondary fermentation. The, uh, the whole idea of sparkling wine is that part of the process be fermented in the very bottle. Um, bottle fermentation uh, traps that naturally occurring byproduct of fermentation called carbon dioxide. So the, the, the gas in a sparkling wine is created from the fermentation process in order to get the the numbers right in order to balance all these moving parts of winemaking, water, acidity, sugar content. The fruit for sparkling wine is picked about three weeks to a month uh, before uh, the fruit for um, still wines. Uh, picked at a lower sugar level, that wine is fermented to the tune of about 10% alcohol by volume. And then that wine, be it Chardonnay in this case, would be bottled still and into the bottle would be added um, a little bit of yeast and a little bit of sugar. And then the bottle would be sealed off. And in that bottle, that additional yeast would, would consume um, that additional sugar and create additional alcohol and additional carbon dioxide. That component of carbon dioxide, the part trapped in the bottle during that second period of fermentation, transforms to the effervescence that we love in a sparkling wine. So yes, October, I'm sorry, August 17th, when we started picking our grapes for the Blanc de Blanc. Now that 2020 vintage of Blanc de Blanc, we won't be seeing that on the shelves here at Frank Family Vineyards uh, for another five years, probably 2025, that wine will make an appearance. So in 2025, I encourage you to come and join me uh, and, and have a glass of it. Thank you, Marissa, and congratulations, Rachel. Gerard, how's that paella coming along? Coming along really well. Looks yeah. pretty good. Let's take a minute and introduce the main star of today's broadcast our 2018 <laughs> vintage um, Pinot Noir and it's pairing with Gerard's incredible paella. Now there's an old saying when talking about how wine and food pairs if it grows together it goes together and I think that's a great great mindset if you're looking at regional dishes dishes known in places um, uh, uh, and famous from those places it's fun to look at the wines that also come from those places because by and large, those dishes and those wines have grown together over, over many, many years. Um, the wines of Spain, we're talking about Rioja, we're talking about uh, uh, the grape Tempranillo, which is also used in the slightly south of the Rioja region, the region known as Ribeiro del Doro, and we're talking about the grape Garnacha. And these are all really bright, really fresh, really vibrant, uh, red fruit driven wines, which is exactly what we're talking about in our 2018 uh, Louis Pinot Noir. I'm loving this wine. It's brand new to us here at the tasting room, and this is probably only the first or second time that I've really tried it. Um, loaded with ripe red fruit notes, um, floral notes like violet, um, undercurrents of cracked uh, pepper, and then a s slightly soft um, herbal note. Gerard, what do you think of this Pinot? I love it. Yeah. Freshness is the key to this wine. Uh, bright, crisp, clean acidity, ripe, vibrant, fresh-picked fruit. This wine is driven by that energy. And that fresh, bright note, I think, is going to be a really wonderful partner um, to the savory flavors, the yep. herbal notes, and the richness of your dish. Yeah, again, a nod to Todd. He's amazing, right? Yeah, nod to Todd. Yeah. Uh, Todd, uh, in a previous virtual tasting that we did, Todd referred to this wine as his, his baby. Um, we, uh, uh, Rich, myself, Todd, and, and one of our, our wine educators here at Frank Town Vineyards, Antonio, we shared some wines on Father's Day. And we talked about fathers, and we talked about being fathers, we talked about being sons. Um, when we were talking about what wines we wanted to share, we wanted that kind of to drive us. And, and Todd said, well, I want to share the Pinot Noir because that wine is like my baby. Um, I'm going to text Todd right now and ask him why I wasn't on that short invite list. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. you got it. Um, the Lewis Vineyard, the property from which this wine comes and our Chardonnay and our fruit for Blanc de Blanc, um, was purchased by the Franks in 2000. Um, it was 
uh, chosen for its uh, 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 southern proximity. It was chosen to grow Chardonnay. And it's been a really successful Chardonnay vineyard ever since the year 2000. Uh, when Todd came on board in 2003, um, it was right around the time that some of those vines, about 10 acres of Chardonnay on the Lewis Vineyard, were in need of a, of a, of a replant. And Todd uh, went to Rich and said, you know, we don't grow any Pinot Noir down here, but it's ideally situated for Pinot Noir. We're going to flip 10 acres of, of fruit. Can we plant a little Chardonnay there? And so Todd really brought Chardonnay to the Lewis Vineyard and really elevated it in Frank Family's program. Um, a few years after that, I think Rich had kind of forgotten about that conversation. And Todd uh, showed up in his office and said, here, I, I want you to taste something. Rich tasted and said, this is fabulous. What is this? And Todd said, it's yours. It's your Pinot Noir from Lewis Vineyard. And uh, that style of wine and, and, and this Lewis Vineyard wine was born. So in terms of the vineyard, 80 acres in size, only 10 acres uh, dedicated to Pinot Noir growth. So this really is one of our smallest programs. Um, fresh is a great way to talk about this wine. This is the current release. So it's just hit our shelves. And it's really, again, driven by that bright, fresh acidity and red fruit note. Um, it's aged in a combination of half new and half once filled French oak barrels, which gives it just that touch of caramel and vanilla uh, and a hint of that spice, uh, but really bright and really ripe. And great and, earth tones as well. It's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, great under, undercurrents of earth or, or herb. Very or, food friendly, very paya friendly. So let's talk about that. The yeah. acidity of the wine pairs well with the richness of the dish. Do you think we're ready to plate this thing? We're just about there right now. Dynamite, I yeah. can't wait. So we're at about 30 minutes on the overall process between the simmering and sauteing of the bell peppers and the garlic, between the addition of the onions, the addition of our proteins, whether it be uh, a rabbit, as Gerard said, or chicken, some chorizo, uh, and then uh, a little bit of uh, mussels. Is that right? I didn't put mussels in it today. We, we thought about mussels, but I have them on reserve if we're going to have them. But right now we're just stuck to the recipe that was emailed out. Got it. Okay, so no mussels in this one, but a little bit of shrimp. Yeah. And uh, all the viewers at home, uh, email, questions, paella tips, all that kind of stuff, all the secrets, we'll, we'll send them all to you. That's no problem at all. Go to GerardsPaella.com and we'll, we'll make sure you get flooded with all your answers. So you tell need. us a little bit more about that. You as a, as a, as a chef working yeah. in this very, I'll admit it, challenging time. Yeah. Um, your, your, your work is available for those who are looking for uh, uh, a, a personal chef and a private chef. Yeah, but personal chef, private chef. And also, if, um, we're doing a lot, of, um, a lot of homeschooling with my kids at home. And uh, I've got lots of time to answer lots of questions. So if you want to email me questions about cooking or whatever, I've got a lot of time on my hands. And I'm happy to answer all that kind of stuff and more. So Great. Yeah, no big deal. Gerard, before we plate this incredible dish, I want to throw it to Marissa. I think we have one more <laughs> trivia question. This one was really buried deep in the conversation. So you had to be really listening to get this one. All right. Great. So we are now asking, um, and actually I'm going to be looking for the third correct answer for this one, just to throw you guys for a loop. What country influenced the creation of Spanish paella? Third correct answer in the chat section. All right. You guys are quick. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Kimmel, congratulations, Morocco. Great answer, Megan Kimmel. Congratulations. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, Morocco, uh, as uh, uh, that, that more Middle Eastern uh, influence kind of traveled into and settled into yeah. Spain. I think the, Moor, the Moors were there for about 375 years. Say it again. The Moors were there for about 375 years, and they had uh, some influence on architecture and stuff, but uh, they definitely brought this dish to Spain, and after that occupation, um, they left so fast that Pan stayed behind, and the Spaniards said, hey, we're calling that paella now, and they started their own little, little dish there. And paella references the pan. Exactly, yeah. What's the other, there's, sometimes people think paella means? Spanish for paella, for her. For her. Kind of, it's really, the pan is a, the paella. This is the, the pan. The pan is the paella. Yeah. yeah. Good to know. Good to yeah. know. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, Leslie's I can't, jumping I can't in. take it. Is it ready yet? It's ready. Let's plate it up. <laughs> We're doing it. Because the truth of the matter is, Rich and I are really here just to eat. So... <laughs> Let's get to the point then. Right, exactly. Let's get to it. You know what What was interesting, um, Gerard, what I didn't um, know before today, as I was paying attention, uh, is that the, you purposely want that rice to sort of caramelize on the bottom of the exactly. pan. You don't want to mix up paella. See, I, 
I'm kind of one of those. I'm, I'm not the best cook in the world, full disclosure. Um, that's why people like Gerard are my friend, because he really knows how to cook. Um, <laughs> but I would have been mixing it up. Me I would have thought that that's what you do. Um, obviously, the presentation in the pan is so beautiful. You, you've got the, you know, the lemons perfectly placed and the, and the shrimp perfectly placed. But um, that's, uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So. Um, yeah, no, the, uh, the, um, the dish itself, the pan is, is so important in the preparation of this, di of this dish. And the, you have the time to arrange everything nicely like a little art piece, so why not? I was surprised that the rice was pretty much one of the last things to go in. Yeah. I assumed it would be first because it needed to soak up right. some It'd of that longer. moisture yeah. and, and, and fluff up. But that's not the way it, it came together. Yeah. Well, I can't wait for 2021. I know I'm not alone when I say that because we're hoping that we can bring back the Pinot and Paella dinner oh, yeah. that we've done with, with Gerard in the past. It's a wine club member favorite. We know that. And... Um, and we're excited to, uh, to have you back uh, to, to cook and mingle with our wine club members when, when it's um, safe to do so. Oh, we so, can't wait. Yeah. I, Strange I'm, times. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone at home <laughs> feels the same way. So uh, we're doing the best we can to stay connected with you and to bring you paella and pino, though virtually, not quite the same, but hopefully you're cooking along and, and sipping along and... Um, and we, we can't wait to see you back here at the winery. And thank you so. for joining us. I would love to hear from our audience at home. Did anybody uh, uh, cook along with us today? Yeah, Anyone that, having that any would be success great. So, I'd love making to know. this dish uh, in their own homes? I, I'm going to help you with that. <laughs> you are so wonderful. Uh, Rich, this, this, this plated food is your cue to come in. And um, sorry, Liam, you, you will get some too. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good right now. Thank you so much. No, no, no. You have to taste. You have to <laughs> I'm taste. I'm looking forward to it. So. Um, um, in terms of the wine pairing, you know, in Gerard's dish, he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of powerful flavors, but they're all well woven mm. and none of them I think are very dominant. Right. That's a great way to think about Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is less about power and intensity oh and more That's about amazing. breadth and depth and complexity and nuance and layering. Yeah. This dish to me, so many wonderful flavors. If one were to, um, uh, kind of jump out too too much or be too loud or be too intense right. then all that work you've done in putting the dish together gets lost right that's a lot of a, flavors but all subtle yeah. all so, subtle yeah. that's a great way to think about pinot noir M multi-dimensional layered elegant but subtle in its approach and less bombastic <coughs> like say yeah. one of our cabernets which are very intense and focused mm. yeah how's the dish guys it's amazing um I don't have a microphone, but I'm telling you, it's delicious. <laughs> Talking really to my good. microphone. So I know that I asked you to include the chorizo because yes. I like a little bit of kick. And there is a tiny bit of kick, but to your point, it's not overpowering the dish. Yeah. It's complimenting the dish, Complimented, I think. Yeah. So, it's, I, it, of course, it's all personal, right? Right. I mean, I'll, I'll do the seafood, the chicken, the chorizo. I, I'm not a big fan of the rabbit. I'm going to say it's psychological with me can't do that but i know that's a very popular one as well um this is really exceptional and you just never disappoint okay uh, you just so never kind. disappoint and so. how to pick anything that goes with this wine it's this, this pinot noir yeah the pinot noir yeah. I, yeah i know everybody thinks we planned this before but yeah we knew what we wanted to put together but it just matches well perfectly yeah, it just kind of it just kind of rolls you. together, you know, pinot and paella. Yeah. So it's it. Well, and without, without Todd here, yes. we're all going to be able to eat paella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sneak over there back to my chair and eat the rest of this. Mm. Wow! Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Leslie. I'll I'll tell you a fun story about Gerard. The last time I saw Gerard before today um, was, I believe, in April. So yeah. we were the wineries in Napa Valley had closed down during the shelter in place. And some of us were still coming to work, doing the, the work that needed to be done on a daily basis to keep uh, business operations up. And, and on one of those days, I was, I was there in my office uh, by myself, and I got a call from Todd. And he said, uh, by the way, Gerard made some pre-boxed paella for us. And you rolled up with uh, uh, self-contained 
paella dishes that we could eat right. safely yeah, together. Yeah. And I tell fun. you, it was, it's the little things, right? And when, <laughs> when times are tough, it's the little things that can really lift your spirit, that yeah. can really get you through a tough day. Yeah. And, and that day that Todd Graff, our winemaker and general manager here at Frank Fellow Vineyards, that day that Todd called me and said, hey, by the way, Gerard's bringing some packaged paellas that he made safely that we can enjoy today. I said, man, this is a... It's a great day. Where so was, it was a nice I day. that day? <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing about that. I didn't know. They, they didn't tell me. They didn't tell me. Somebody had a lot of paella. Yeah. Right? I want to say cheers to our chef. I'd also like to... Cheers. Uh, one cheers. last cheers to you, sir. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, Thanks for Thank you for joining us. I'd like to open it up one last time to our viewers at home with any questions for the chef, questions for Leslie, Rich, myself, um, uh, uh, comments on the experience and the wines that you've enjoyed today. Yeah, you actually, they, they, they don't need a burner at home. You can do this on a stovetop as well. Oh. The, recipe that, the recipe that we that we emailed out is for a standard uh, uh, electric or gas grill at home. So, But if you want to scale it up or whatever, email and we'll figure it out for you. Right. And again, the recipe is on our website, frankfamilyvineyards.com. Marissa, which section in the website? In the blog section. In the blog section of our website, frankfamilyvineyards.com. Go to the bottom of the website. You'll see blog. Click on that and you'll find the recipe to Gerard's. Paella, if, if you don't have it already. So. I'm at home sheltering, and I'm ready for your questions. I'll be home. Okay. Gerard, <laughs> let's talk about you when this isn't happening. You cater yep. on a regular basis. Yeah. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Just gerardspaella.com. Gerardspaella.com. Okay. Gerardspaella.com. We go anywhere. We're good socially distancing and everything. So, so where, if, if we were to cook this in a paella pan, where do we buy this pan? Where do we get it? Online, uh, Spanish Table, Sur La Table. Um, a lot of stores have them, have them now. So it's not as hard a dish to get anymore. But, and and uh, what do you call it? A paella, paella pan? pan. Paella yeah. pan. Yeah. It's that simple. That's okay. simple. Yeah. Uh, Amazon, I'm sure, right? Amazon, Not that I'm sure. endorsing Amazon. Not at all. I'm just trying to keep your life simple, folks. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It'll be at your doorstep the next day. It's so. all about that. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, enjoy well, that delicious I think, dish. I will. I think Marissa has some, uh, more, some more comments and questions. Marissa? We have a lot of folks um, tuning in today and cooking along with you. Um, just to name a few, we have Nelson Tucker, who is cooking at home. Um, everyone's just enjoying this. Some, some folks are going to be um, cooking later on today. So everyone, please share photos with us. We'd love to see your creations at home as well. And a lot of you have questions that um, we weren't able to get to, and we will be sending out an email later this week, or early next week, I should say, with answers to your questions. Um, a couple questions, uh, Chef Gerard, that we, we were getting a lot of. Somebody wants to know, um, what is that the black uh, chile that you're using in the center of the paella? A lot of people have been asking about that. It's called a Nora chili, N-O-R-A. And it's a chili from Spain, uh, no heat, uh, but it's a kind of smoky flavor to it. It's like the bay leaf of the dish. If you're gonna do a big pot of black beans, you put some bay leaves in, that, that chili is the bay leaf of the paella, and it goes in every paella. That's a standard practice. Standard practice, yeah. Good, good, one of the flavors, one of the wonderful in flavors. In any paella. And then tell me a little bit about the squid ink paella, because that's something you've prepared here at one of our events in the past. But yeah, one of my favorites. It's a black paella, and it's, uh, very, very seafood strong. So yes. you got to love seafood for it, but a great paella, one of the paella greats, but it's like the Vegemite of paellas. You love it or hate it. You don't, okay. you don't kind of like Vegemite. You don't kind of <laughs> like the squid ink paella either. It's, Vegemite, it's either you're, you're into it or you're not. That yeah. Australian like spread, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never I had tried it every it. day. I love it. I, yeah. I mean, I grew up in Australia. I just went to high school. Oh, wow. So right. I have Vegemite every day, but I um, know that. That's you, great. you can't just throw Vegemite on a party like the squid ink paella. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, Gerard, let me say thank you so much for joining thank us. You. It's been a, yeah. a, a real joy to share this day with you. Yeah, uh, great. For our guests at home, thank you for sharing this opportunity to sample some of our favorite wines from Carneros, from our Lewis Vineyard. We've paired the Blanc de Blanc from 2014 with a simple pairing of a, of a, of a nice, buttery, rich cheese uh, called Manchego. Um, we paired our... 2018 vintage Lewis Vineyard Chardonnay with Gerard's shrimp skewer awesome and cheese. fresh vegetable yep. dish. That yep. was an yep. awesome pairing. And we paired our 2018 most recent release, Lewis Vineyard Pinot Noir 
with that wonderful, complex, layered paella that you've made today. And I think that really was a perfect pairing, the way those two uh, complemented each other, the way the freshness and brightness of the fruit and the acidity of the pinot offset those savory notes, and the way that layered approach to winemaking that Todd is so wonderful at capturing uh, complemented your layered approach to the, to the paella. I love it, yeah. Compliment. The, the wine is amazing. To Fantastic. all of our friends at home watching, uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts, for your messages. Thank you for thinking about Frank family during this uh, very challenging time. Um, um, our hearts uh, go out to those uh, uh, in Napa and Sonoma and all of Northern California who are displaced by these fires and those who are working on the front line to keep everyone safe. Um, uh, thank you to all of you so much for the work that you do. Richard Leslie, thanks for joining us today. Wonderful to see you, and thank you all at home. It's been a pleasure. Again, my name is Liam Garrity. I'm the Director of Hospitality here at Frank Family Vineyards, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, friends. Thank you.